Hi, um, my name is John Diel. Welcome to uh, another Using New and Emerging Technology uh, UNET uh, vidcast. We're going to look today at GeoGebra. Uh, it's uh, a free educational mathematics software that joins together dynamic geometry, algebra and calculus. That sounds a bit daunting, doesn't it? Um, let's go, first of all, to the website. Um, as it says on the website, and I'll zoom in so you can actually read it, it's uh, free software for learning and teaching. It's interactive, gra interactive graphics, algebra, and a spreadsheet. Uh, and it's suitable for from elementary school to university level. And it also has free learning materials. In the first steps, for example, that are on the screen at the moment, you'll see that there are introductory materials. There is a user's forum and learning materials, all of which you can access from the website. The uh, link to that being at the top of the screen. Um, for the downloads, so it doesn't matter whether you click on the download um, button, which I'll just highlight for you there, or whether you click on the downloads up at the top here, which I've just highlighted. I'll just draw a box around it as well so you can see. It doesn't really matter which of those you click. If you click on them, it will take you through to a number of different options. Uh, again, I'll zoom in so you can see them. The first one is Web Start, which basically will install and start GeoGebra on your computer and you'll get a desktop icon to use the software offline as well. If you haven't got administrator's rights, that may be a problem for you. Uh, there's Applet Start, which opens a fully functional GeoGebra applet in your web browser Nothing is installed on your computer, so that's one way of getting around of uh, having it blocked. Um, there is uh, an emailing list there where you can uh, stay informed about updates for this free software. And last but not least, there is an offline installer. Now, I use this uh, to load it onto the machine that I'm using at the moment. Uh, all you do need to do is to click on the offline installer and you'll get the opportunity to download um, uh, an XE file for uh, an Apple Mac, Windows, etc. Okay. Uh, the idea behind this is to allow uh, practitioners to give their learners the software uh, for learners who don't have internet access at home. It means you can still give it to them to run on their computers. There is, of course, as always with any software, a license. Uh, but as it says here, you're free to copy, distribute and transmit GeoGebra for non-commercial purposes. And you can click on the hyperlink there and you can go and read the, uh, the license in more detail. OK, let's just open up the software itself. Uh, here it is. Um, I've deliberately not filled the complete page because I think it's important that um, I can add some comments at the top if necessary. Let's just get rid of you though. That's better. Um, okay, let's have a quick overview of the, um, the graphics user interface, the GUI, I suppose. You have got, as you would expect these days, to have... Uh, the menu at the top, which will be drop down menu. We've then got the toolbar underneath and at the end, which is very useful, it gives you uh, a brief tool tip as to what you've actually selected. We've also on the left hand side down here, we have the algebra window, which may become a bit clearer to you when I get, do the demonstration. We have over on the right hand side at the top, and I'll just put an arrow so you can see where I'm talking about. We've got an undo and redo so that when you're drawing, you can do exactly that undo and redo. We have the main area here, which is the drawing pad. And then across the bottom, and I'll zoom in on it in a minute, is um, 
the input field which is there and there are at the other end three lots of input options okay let me just escape from that I'm just going to zoom in so you can see the uh, input options at the end there and the input bar where you can type formulas etc straight in and drawings will take place okay okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how a triangle can be drawn how you can um, uh, bisect and draw vertical bisectors to uh, two sides of the triangle to find the middle where we can then draw a circle that go through uh, the three vertices and then having done that I'll demonstrate how the whole thing then becomes dynamic and that will really be our introduction okay first things first in the view menu at the top I'll just zoom in so that you can see the view menu okay at the moment all of those with a tick or or a blue outline are obviously those that have been selected so I'm going to click on axes to get rid of the axes that are on there I don't need to see them and I'm going to get rid of the algebra view because at the moment it's not necessary to actually see it okay so I'll do that first view axes are gone view algebra view is gone and that gives us a nice clear uh, drawing area to, to actually do this particular work okay um, first things first what I'm going to do is to do choose the polygon from the toolbar again I'll zoom in so that you can see where I'm talking about this is the toolbar that we're going to choose and when we choose it you'll have two options so let's just do that the top option he says is the polygon and the next one down is a regular polygon so let's just choose polygon that will enable me to draw your triangle and you do that by clicking once for the first vertex notice a line is attached to the cursor uh, again for the second and again for let's just draw that down here somewhere the third and then you'll need to go back to the first vertex to complete the triangle okay now as you know the center of the circle is where the bisectors of the sides of the triangle cross so if we now go to the um, let's just check which one it is uh, this one isn't it okay let me just zoom in on that so you can see it okay you'll notice that by clicking on this particular uh, icon we've got a whole load of options and the one that I am going to do choose is this one the perpendicular bisector okay so let's just do that perpendicular bisector all you need to do then is to click on one of the sides notice it's been selected it's gone darker click on it and it will draw a perpendicular bisector and you can do the same again and if necessary a third time and notice how they all cross in one place that will be the center of the circle that I'm going to draw that will allow you to have a circle going through each vertex I'm going to right click on that one and uh, delete it because the tool I'm going to use next is to um, put uh, a, a, a dot a new dot actually where two objects intersect so um, again I need to check which one it is it's this particular tool so I'm going to zoom in so you can see it as before okay when I click on this particular tool there I get these options and the one that I'm going to choose is that one okay so I'll do that now and then when I go on to where they intersect I just click on it and it puts in a dot if I right click on it and if you were using a Mac you would um, do a control and click but I right click on it and I'm going to rename it okay and I'm going to call it M click OK by the way if you 
want to actually uh, show the labels on the others. If I right click on that and choose show label, the letter A appears. Right click on that, show label, the letter B. Right, oh, right click, show label, and it'll have the letter C. And if you want to move them so that they're not hidden by the lines, you just click on them and you can move them to wherever you want. Let's just move the M as well. Okay, so there's our triangle and that's the center of the circle that we've planned on drawing. The next tool to use, and again, I will zoom in so that you can see it. Okay, you need to click on this particular toolbar and you want to draw a circle with center through the a particular point. There are lots of other options as you can see, but that's the one that I'm going to select. So I click on it, the drop down menu, I choose the circle. I then go to the point M and click on it. And then with my hands, both off the um, mouse, uh, I can just drag it out. And it doesn't matter whether I click on A or C or B. When I click on it, there's the circle. Okay. Now, that's gone through explaining um, a triangle as a polygon. I've um, done a, a line bisector. Um, where they cross is the center of the circle, and I've drawn a circle that goes through the three points. Now, one of the things that I think is really quite impressive now is if I select the first tool, and I'm just going to zoom in again so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. What we've got by selecting this particular tool here is these three options. And all I'm going to do is to choose the one where I can move things. Okay, you can have a play with some of the uh, others. Um, you can also, if you notice there, if you want to, you can actually record the data that is going to be shown in a minute onto a spreadsheet. But I'm not going to do that for this vidcast. So I'm going to select move and if you watch, I'll choose a, it doesn't really matter which one. If I move this, then you'll notice how the whole lot becomes more dynamic. Note how it's the center of the circle is not in the triangle anymore, it's outside. And you can take it right the way across, look. Uh, you can change the position of a relative to the other. So that makes it really dynamic. Uh, if you, uh, again, I'll just zoom in so you can see it. If you actually click on this one, there, oh, doesn't matter, I've forgotten the rectangle. If you click on that particular tool, you can move the whole screen about. I'm just going to move that over slightly. I'm going to go back to the view menu and show the algebra view now. And I'm just going to move this back in so you can see both fairly close together. Here, he says, drawing a rectangle again, is all of the information about this particular thing. So, for example, this point A here, that's the position of it on the screen. And this particular point B here, okay, is that position and so on and of course M if you want the M position that is there and the length of the side A which will be this side okay and again we can show that that side A in a minute uh, etc okay so if we actually um, bear with me to remember where this is Let's show the label. There you go. That's side A. Show the label again. Side B. Oh, no, that's side C, obviously. I need to move the C so you can see it. Oh, missed. There you go. That's side C. And this one, hopefully, when I right-click on it and show the label, that will be side B. Okay. Now, all of those measurements... If you were to draw it out and make the measurements, those are the sort of things that you would come up with. But 
here if we now become dynamic let's choose a uh, let's choose c because i've shown it in a as i move c notice that these data is changing let's move b okay getting different data for each one that data can be collected so you can actually uh, record it without having to draw them over and over and over you can actually collect data for lots of different positions, different sizes, different shapes, etc. And that obviously has got lots of other uses. The only other thing that I'll mention in the file uh, is, and I'll zoom in again so that you can see it, is that if you click on export there on that particular button, this menu appears. Okay. And you can actually save it as a dynamic uh, worksheet, as a web page, in fact. And there is a tutorial uh, that you can look at on the um, GeoGebra uh, YouTube um, channel that will show you how you can actually um, take the web page HTML and paste it straight into Moodle so you could have that interactive drawing actually within Moodle itself. Um, I suppose if I just do uh, a quick file export as a dynamic worksheet I'll zoom in again so you can see what you've got here. I can put in the title, the author goes in automatically, the dates in, you can put text above what you've produced, text below what you've produced etc okay um, let's just give this a title uh, of um, circumcircle of a triangle okay I'm not going to mess about with anything else if I click on the advanced, by the way, I can change what can be uh, altered, uh, whether they can see things or not. I can change the size of it, um, etc. I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. I'm not going to mess about. Uh, and I'm going to export it. Let me just save it somewhere sensible, he says. I apologize for the time this little bit's taking. Call it circumcircle of triangle and click save. Okay. And here it comes. And that's the web page. And you'll notice that on the web page for the learners now that if they actually go onto it, they can alter it and change it. They can um, experiment and collect data from it. Okay. As I say, that is a web page in, in a browser. So that's uh, all for this particular UNET vidcast. I hope you found it useful. I hope that those doing STEM subjects and in particular maths uh, practitioners and learners will find it a, a useful tool. Um, there are times when I wish I was teaching science, physics and or maths again. Uh, I'm not sure how long that lasts, but with tools like this, it will make it far more enjoyable for both practitioner and learner.